It is the biggest sporting spectacle for a reason. The Olympics the Paris 2024 has begun and uh, we've seen a lot of um, action from football to boxing to basketball, uh, you name it. Uh, we also have Team Nigeria fully represented um, at the Olympics. With that, I welcome you to another exciting edition of Sports Pizza. My name is Edwin Onyebolise. As always, we give you an entertaining show, an informative show, fully packed uh, for your viewing a pleasure we have so much to unpack on the show today i'm not doing this alone i have uh, the company of uh, david but first let's go on a break catch our breath when we come back we'll give you all the juicy stories analysis on the show today don't change the channel Welcome back. It is still Sports Pizza. Edwin on your bullet in the building alongside David. Welcome to the show, David. How are you doing? Edwin, I'm good. It's a pleasure to be here as always. I mean, over the course of the weekend, I caught the Arsenal versus United and preseason. Come on. I, I realized Come on, how man. far international <laughs> football has gone from cup. Yeah. Um, and a preseason friendly game can excite me even more than most of the games <laughs> I saw at the, at the Euros of Cup of America. But we are where we are. Pleasure to be here. Let's yeah, in the second half of the show, we'll talk about uh, the preseason games we have seen thus far. Yeah. But first, we have to start with the Olympics, yeah. of course, David. Um, let me start with the opening ceremony. Uh, what did you make of it? The, the opening ceremony, you know, we've seen different opening ceremonies over the... I think the best I've seen over the course of my time, I think the Beijing was colorful, you know, China and all their culture yeah. and everything. But I think France, well, they did as much as they could do with the resources we know we, we seem to see believe that Europeans don't have as much culture as the rest of the world but they delivered the best they could with what they had uh, what did you make of Team Nigeria's attire <laughs> I'm not a fashion person but I think they they tried their best to represent Nigeria but it was colorful and our clothes were represented and I think the athletes themselves tried to make it a spectacle good one all right away from the Rasmatas um, controversy is it controversy um, Team Nigeria um, an athlete yeah um, failed the drug test. Can you tell us more about that story? Yeah, so um, since uh, um, Ogun Shemi Lore, she a boxer in the um, less than 60 kg category yeah. in 22 years. This is her first Olympic. She was expected to be one of Nigeria's hopes getting a medal, but um, she was tested for a, a positive for a substance, you know, furosemide. And um, though she has come out to say she, that the test was not um, genuine, that the results were not probably as but I think. Um, it shows a lot of things that, if most of these things, we, as Nigeria as a country, is one of the reasons why we're on the red list of WADA for a long time. Yeah. Because one, we don't we are still on that list. Yeah, we, we don't have a testing facility in Nigeria, and that's one of the criteria for you to, you know, get off that list. It shows you, we don't do testing. Let's just be honest with ourselves. We don't do testing for athletes in Nigeria. We don't consider it important. And it shows how far back we are. We keep having issues like this. And the painful thing is that she might be telling the truth, not in the case of her results being, being positive. forged. Mm. But the fact that she unknowingly took a substance. banned substance, yeah. um, most of our athletes don't have nutritionists, yeah. Yeah. we don't have personal trainers, like you said, um, we don't have testing facilities. Yeah. Uh, at a big stage like this, you open yourself to all sorts, and yeah. it's unfortunate for her uh, that um, um, she was found wanting yeah. in that regard. And stuff like this will go on to um, affect your, your career going forward because. Whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. your competitors in the future will always reference that, yeah. uh, to that instance where um, you failed um, a it doping does, test. Yeah, it is yeah. so unfortunate. But hey, there are positives. Um, before we get to that, Aaron Okodri, uh, perhaps his final Olympics representing Team Nigeria, yeah. uh, he was so close. Yeah. At some points, he was leading. He was leading 3, three, three 1 yeah, just to win the fourth. Just corner. to win the fourth. In, in fact, in the um, Fine, deciding set. Yeah. He was three zero up yeah. or three love up, like they use in tennis, yeah. and he blew it away. Eventually, yeah. blew it away. I, I, I mean, this is back to back Olympics now that he's been knocked out in the first round in um, Tokyo. We saw him also getting knocked out. The fact that he was knocked out to a debutant at this com uh, competition, at UNESCO, the Romania, you know, um, the, this is first Olympics, and to knock out a veteran of the Olympics, it shows you that you know the. Career, the club is now is now you know declining yeah. at this point in time. But not just him, you know. Um, I allow you the other male um, also got knocked out in the first round. We also had a female um, tennis player also uh, them of young also knocked out in the first. That's three. So we have only you know our chances 
the Olympics is just a few days in and we already have most of our medal hope being knocked out. We know we said it before this Olympics that the hopes are not very yeah. good. Now you get dimmer and dimmer with it passing the unfortunate. Very dim, yeah. very dim. But uh, let's hope that the likes of Toby Amuso and Sebrume yeah. uh, will step up to the table and deliver us um, a couple of medals. Yeah. All right, um, still with Team Nigeria, David, the Super Falcons. Yeah. Um, we had a fantastic run by our standards or yeah. Africa's standards at the, the World, World Cup. Cup, but it feels like the Olympic is a tougher task. Um, from the two games I've seen, I felt we were more conscious of not losing no. than playing to win. I think, for example, the Brazil game. We had a couple of chances yeah. that we should have put to bed, didn't happen. But if we kept that tempo, if we kept that positivity, yeah. I thought we would have hurt um, the uh, Brazilians like the Japanese did, despite going a goal down. Yeah, yeah. They found their way back. Um, in all of this, um, will you blame Randy Waldrum? For the results we've seen from from the Falcons, I, I of course the manager has to take the blame at this point in time. Fine, you say well, the players did not um, take their chances, but you know we saw at the World Cup the tactics that he employed. We felt we were being more you know conservative, trying to get you know we got a victory against Australia, then we, we drew also against um, the US. But you know we kept. Now we come to the Olympics at the we like at the higher level, but it feels like you know women's Olympics you know is more competitive than the, the men because they're coming with everybody comes with their full yeah. two squad. So I think um we tried but Randy Wardrum it seems like you know at this point in time is why um the difference between us and the rest of the world, you know, the, the bigger countries, you know, is the gap is there and I don't think Randy Wardrum is the man to bridge that gap. And I also don't think Randy Wardrum is the reason why our football um, no, still not. remains at this level. You watch I watch Spain and their yeah, decision making, yeah. my goodness, my goodness. Um, it was simple but very, very effective. You yeah. watch the Germans, you watch the Americans, and it didn't just start. It wasn't by magic that yeah. it happened. It, it was serious planning, um, the structures, the facilities, okay. um, the coaches going through um, some world class um, training um, courses. Yeah. All of that will give you success. And by the way, Spain. Um, the under-19 team, yeah, also, uh, European yeah. champions, okay. the women world champions, you have the men, European, European senior champion. um, champions, champions, the under-17 women champions, under-20 women. It is, I keep saying, there's yeah. a blueprint for us Absolutely. to follow. Just pick which is best suited for yeah. Yeah. your country okay. and just run with it. Um, anyways, uh, kudos to. I, I'm not going to. I'm not blaming the Falcons. No. I'm not blaming them. Um, they give their best. Yes, it was a tall order. It was um, irrespective of the shabby uh, preparations yeah. uh, they face on a regular basis. Also, Team Nigeria. I'm not going to criticize Any anybody. Else, yeah. I won't. Some countries prepare four years prior to the major yeah. tournaments. Others six, some seven. But we four or five months. And you expect magic? It's not hey, possible. It's not going to happen. Yeah. We'll give you all of the latest updates from the Olympics um, during the course um, of the show. Welcome back to the second half of the show, Still Sports Pizza. Remember to follow us on our social media platforms. The handles are now showing on your screen. David, uh, let's do a couple of preseason games. Yes. First, let me ask, do preseason results matter? Not really. The results, not necessarily. But the performances are the, uh, maybe a point out to where the season is going to is going to go when you look at the way teams like Chelsea are, you know, performing in the preseason. It seems like there's a lot of confusion, and you know, <laughs> they they ended the season on a good note, and then they they crashed it all, and then decided to rebuild, and the rebuild is not going well. But the results generally, you know, unless you get on the end of a a real um, hiding, maybe like a four one five one, like what Chelsea had over the course of the weekend, those kind of results go a long way to dampen your confidence. But um, you shouldn't really take too much and use it to judge the season. I mean, United beat uh, Arsenal in the last season and we saw how the season ended up. But it's the performances that are more important. So Arsenal have de defeated United right now. Yeah. So are we seeing a rose reverse coming to the season? It, it's it's, it's <laughs> entirely possible. Anything can happen. Yeah. All right, David, I'm still with preseason games. Um, for Mareska, Chelsea's coach, we know he wants to play a certain type yeah. of way. Yeah. Now they've gotten 
another Good. goalkeeper who, in his opinion, can, can play how he wants his goalkeepers yeah. to play. Was that a priority for Chelsea? I mean, we have reached the time in football where the, the things that don't really matter are really what I mean. If, look at the way Chelsea finished last, the way they played last season. They were, you know, in the top 10 in Europe for chances created, but in terms of chances actually converted, they were, not, they were nowhere in, in, to be found. And so a goalkeeper coming in that can play, use his feet, is not going to solve that. It's not even going to, in any way, go, go, uh, go to solve that problem. So I don't think that was the priority. I mean, they have Giorgio Petrovic. It was not really bad at the tail end of last season. Sanchez also. Sanchez, well, Sanchez is... At is Brighton, not, it wasn't bad with At Brighton, feet. it wasn't, but... He yeah, has shown that at Chelsea, I think, you know, we talk about, you, know, you mentioned it a few times, that it's not just the goalkeeper, you know, the defenders that yeah. you have in front of you, you're able to play that way. And I think Chelsea don't have enough of that. But I think if it's goalkeeper first, then maybe building forward. But let's see, let's, he's a new manager, he wants to stamp his imprint on the team. So I think maybe the goalkeeper is where he wants to start from and then move it forward. Should City fans be worried? Going by the results, in precision, also the performance. And the fact that... Um, a couple of players want out, chief among them um, is Julian Alvarez, who is currently at the Olympics yeah. with Argentina. Yeah, so I think um, the results they shouldn't be where the performance is not where because Guardiola is still the man in charge. And you know, when, when push comes to shove, he gets down on the ground. But I think with the uncertainty of certain players, you know, Ederson, there's been a lot of rumors over the course of the transfer window about his departure, Kevin De Bruyne. He has tried to settle with minds, but to say anything can still happen. Um, Ilan Alvarez now also looking for... I mean, Ilan Alvarez has won everything, so he's right to feel... He now wants to play football. It's like he has done, I was telling somebody over the course of the weekend, he's doing his career in reverse. He has won everything, now he wants to start playing football. <laughs> so I think um, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, issues to be worried about when it comes to, you know... You saw how last season, when the likes of um, Gundogan and Mares left, the team was a little bit affected. They managed to get the title. And that was the only trophy they won. So this season, if more of those departures happen, it might go a long way to affect their season again with the replacements that will come. So I think that's what they should be worried about. All right, let's talk about another team that are trying to punch above their weight. Aston Villa and David have been linked heavily uh, to Yao Felix, um, who so far in his career hasn't found stability. Yeah. Is this the type of signing that gets a manager sacked? I, I think so. Because one is going to come with it. Though the price tag might not be as much, but it's yeah. the, the weight of expectation. You know, and this is a player who you know, led Benfica, went to Atletico Madrid, their most expensive signing. And uh, he has not found it. He has played for Barcelona. I mean, this is a player who you expect much from. And that expectation might, you know, Emery is going for his... Obviously, this is an Emery signing. And then when he comes in and he doesn't hit the ground running, the manager is going to take the blame for it. You know, he did it with Vendia last season. It didn't work. And I, it seems he wants that profile of player, a creative midfielder, somebody who can, you know, pick... You know, passes and open up spaces for his attackers. But I think um, if the Felix signing does not work, there's a lot of baggage that comes with it. Um, Felix or Rafinha, in this case, Rafinha also touted to leave Barcelona, Barcelona. and Villa also um, heavily linked with him. I, I, are you, if you were to advise Unai mm -hmm. Emery, do you go for a talented player now? I'm putting quotes because yeah. hey, um, the best way to measure talent it's is by performance yeah. on the field. I go with Yao Felix. Hoping that his potential energy becomes kinetic mm -hmm. energy. Or you go with a Rafinha mm -hmm. who will not blow up trees, yeah, but, okay. but will give you a certain level of consistency throughout the season. I think they should go for, uh, for Rafinha. I mean, Rafinha, he has, he has Premier League experience. He's Premier League proven. He did with Leeds. We saw him get, I think, 13, 14 goals in the season that Leeds were very good under Bielsa. So I think he's more of the guarantees, you know. Um, quantity, you know what, at least a certain level of what you are going to expect from him. But for Felix, it's totally unknown quantity. We saw him at Chelsea and he flattered to deceive. He felt like there was promise but nothing to deliver. So I think for a manager, I think it's better to go for something that is more guaranteed than for the uh, illusion of what you have to expect. I can let you to Sevilla. I didn't see it coming. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. I knew he was going to move. I was thinking, talking. But it shows that, you know, he still has a, a higher rating in the football world. Generally. And I think I think it's going to be a good move. The league generally, the way yeah. he likes to play, you know, the laid back style, you know, more time on the ball. I think it will, it will be a good move for him eventually. And he has his Nigerian teammates there, Echidera, Ejuke. So I think they will strike up a partnership for Sevilla. And back to Manchester United. Um, Rasport Oilo picked up um, a hamstring mm -hmm. injury. Uh, the season in a couple of weeks will start. First, it is United City in the mm -hmm. Community Shield. Uh, should United fans be worried? that they are, hey, supposedly number nine 
top striker is out and there's a possibility that it's Zexi, who is not a proven goal scorer, yeah. will fill in his boots temporarily. You don't know what to expect from Zexi. Or should they go into the transfer market once again and get an experienced proven striker who doesn't cost much and also um, wouldn't mind sitting on the bench when Rasmus um, Hoyland comes back? I think um, the worry for United fans should be when players start getting injuries like this, under Tenagi, I should need to be a quick excuse for him. He keeps using the injuries, as, even though we've seen managers have injuries and manage. Mm, so I think um, for them, I think um, getting a striker, they need to first know the extent of Hoyland's injury. Because Hoyland himself is still an unknown quantity. You saw him last season in the Premier League. Well, he flattered to the, there were bright sparks, but he's still an un, unknown quantity. He's still potential. Zex is also still potential and also is not a good. So if goals is what they need to be, because my United, over the last two seasons, under Tenna, goals has been a major issue. They've scored. They consistently scored less than teams like Brighton, less than only probably teams in the relegation zone score less than United, and that's a real worry. So if you are relying on two strikers like that, and one is you know injured at this point in time, I think going for like the option you a striker, an experienced striker, who someone like Ivan Tony, if Brentford are willing to let him go, I think it'll be a safer option for them. All right, finally, uh, let's do Real Madrid. Hendrik was unveiled, yeah. and um, it was also a full stadium yeah. for a 17 year old. Is this a superstar in the making? Or are we seeing a player who's going to come in and crumbles under the weight of expectation? Because if Real Madrid pays about 50 million euros yeah, for, for your services as a 16-year-old, it means that you have to come in and yeah. hit the ground running. But hey, what better manager to manage you than Carlo Ancelotti? The story is just, the gener this generation of football is the perfect PR machine. The PR built around that boy. It's more than even the actual football. Yeah, the new Pele. Yeah, the, <laughs> more than the actual football that we have seen him play. But I think um, from his interviews, from his press conference, it seems like he has been managed to be able to, to, to live up to that expectation when he's quoting Pele as his idol. Somebody he actually did not see play. So I think, but I think mentality-wise and everything, they've prepped him up to be the... It's now for him to now deliver the actual football on the pitch. But to be honest, I don't know what to expect. It's an unknown quantity because the rest of Europe have not seen much of him. You know, we saw him in friendlies against Spain and, and, and yeah. England. And we saw, okay, flashes. But I'm still, there are still a lot of doubts. You know, it, it could be the next Brazilian hype and turn out to be all hype and no substance. It also reminds me of former Brazilian forward um, who turned out for AC Milan. Pato yeah. um, came out um, as a youngster with so much promise. But uh, injuries... Um, did uh, make him fulfill his it's promises. Funny. We hope that with Hendrik, that is not the case. I can't wait for the season to, to start. And yeah. uh, that is where we draw a curtain on today's show. I'm sure you had uh, so much fun with us. We'll do the same time next week, but as always, we'll leave you with our video for the week. Do enjoy it. Remember to give us a follow on our social media platforms. And don't forget, we have lovely content for you on a YouTube page. It is Sports Pizza from me, Edwin. It is adios. And David, thank you once again for being on the yeah, show. It's been a pleasure as always. And for me, it's goodbye.